Here's our lead vocal here, pretty standard fare. Again, high pass filter, we've rolled that off, taken a little boominess there and added a little brightness along there. Let's hear what this sounds like by itself. <laughs> can I be there next to you? So you can see there's the melody right there. Can I hold your little hand? And if I never let it go, well, I hope you'll understand. Notice one thing is that every time I release a note, a lot of low energy about an octave below drops in. It's just kind of interesting to see that happen. Let's Little look at it again. face as you wander your path, that one favor to ask. There's your melody. From you. Now look here. Ugh. Can I be. Every time you exhale and let go of your vocal cords, you can get a lot of stuff down there. And if you have a number of vocals that are all doing the same thing and you want to you know, work on that a little bit, you might want to start bringing this up a little bit. In fact, a good thing to do sometimes is just to roll this up and then listen to it in a mix. Like, let's listen to this in a, in a mix. Sounds thin as all get out, right? A good thing to do is start pulling this down. And in fact, not even turning this, uh, even looking at this visually, but just start bringing this lead vocal down a little bit until you, until it sounds right. You it's way, way thin, right? Still thin. Yeah, it's really right about there. And let's see where we are. Uh, yeah, around 80 hertz. So really, that is the place you've got to have your lead vocal. If you bring out any high, it's just going to get really, really thin. So once you're happy with the way that sounds in this lead vocal, just like we did before, I would then copy that filters and effects and then go through all of these ones and I would uh, paste them. Um, paste. And then we'll hear all of these vocals together. And of course, I mean, you can go nitpicking. Some of these are, you know, if this is the uh, the lead vocal, let me just bring this back over here. If this is the lead vocal here, I normally double a vocal and then just bring that down, um, I don't know, about six to 10 dB. So you really can't hear it, but it just adds a little fullness to the lead vocal. But then I think I have like a third and a fifth. Um, so that fifth, could be you know significantly high if you really wanted to go into it you could select this track here whoops select this track here and then you could raise the uh that edge of the um, of the high pass filter i'm not going to get too into that right now but let's just listen to how this sounds with the vocals with all the harmonies uh, in fact let me just solo um all the vocals so we can just hear them without music can i be there next to you the harmony's coming now can I hold your little hand? And if I never let it go, well, I hope you'll understand. So, you know, a couple of things from here. This is not a, a panning tutorial, but uh, just while I'm here, that's what I normally like to do with vocals. It can be the same. These are the same harmony. Um, so can I, be, can I be there next to you? Can I be there next to you? Something like that would be both these. I just double them, pan them out wide, and then um, could I be, could I, could I be there next to you? Something like that. Then you could put that out here, double them, pan them out wide, and again, you know, once you stack a bunch of vocals together, it just starts to sound a whole lot nicer. In fact, let's hear that with a whole band. Can I be the next to you? Can I hold your little hand? In fact, in a mix, you could probably smidge these up a little bit higher. And if I never let it go, well, I hope you understand. I hope you chase down every dream. I think there's some um, uh, there's a bridge here which has some more vocals. Has the years run? Um, but can I be there next to you? Yeah, just a little bit further past here. 
probably around 70 or so. Well, I hope you understand. Further. Can I be the next to you? So say bye to your yesterday. A brand new day is just begun. The future's so bright, you got a light in your life. In fact, let me play that again. I'm going to select these tracks and we'll see what's going on. Spectre, don't worry about the EQ, but just uh, see what's going on with these uh, vocals. Yesterday's a brand new day has just Oops. begun. These high ones. The future's so bright, you got light in your life. Are they really high? The brand new day is just... No, that's kind of the tenor. These are the high ones, are they? Okay, here we go. Out of your yesterday's a brand new day has just begun. So say bye to your yesterday's a brand new day has just begun. So what do you think I could roll those? Off. Have a look at them again. Everybody, your yesterday's a brand new day has just begun. So again, that's the uh, that me that harmony right there is probably around 300 hertz. So I could definitely roll this back because you can see there's still some energy down here. Yesterday's I mean, a, a lot of junk down down there. Begun. Let me see if I can roll them up. Just begun. So I don't hear any difference. We haven't lopped off the bottom part of that vocal there. And then in the mix, that should be a little bit cleaner. So say bye to your yesterday's a brand new day has just begun. The future's so bright, you got a light in your life. Can I? And of course, you do all sorts of automation there with tracks that are not playing there. You could you could record uh, automation, bring them all down, and so on. Pretty cool, huh? You now know exactly how any EQ works, and armed with the information uh, that we learn in the EQ and action section, you can solve any EQ problem in a heartbeat, just like that. Now remember that EQ is best used sparingly. Try to make adjustments at the source with things like mic position. Uh, choose the type of EQ wisely. And also that EQ can be used either as corrective measure or you can use it in all sorts of wild and, and creative ways. Now keep in mind that adding the same favorite bump in a certain frequency range across all of your channels can really add up to unexpected hot spots in your mix. So don't go too crazy with EQ, right? Now, before I go, I wanna thank you for your time and congratulate you for adding to your solid understanding of audio principles. I really gotta say that you are probably in the top 5% of all musicians or audio engineers in that you actually got through this course. So many folks, you know, invest in a lot of this stuff, but a very small number of people like you actually even crack the course open, let alone get this far. So you've done really well to get this far. My name is David Walls. Just remember that you can download your very own EQ cheat sheet uh, from our website. It's probably shining on the camera. But if you go to ProAudioDVDs.com, you can download this cheat sheet. It's a great way to really take what you've learned and just have it in a handy sheet. Like I say, I have laminated this one, but you could even um, frame that in your studio wall. But it's a great way to go through this stuff. Thank you so much for your time. We'll see you next time on our Pro Audio DVD training courses. 
My name is David Walls and ciao for now.